Hey guys, this is Jonathan Walter with Walter Aviation and today is Maintenance Monday. And today we've got this Cherokee 235 here. And this aircraft's in our shop for an annual inspection this week. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you the compression test that we discussed on our last episode and show you a little more detail and depth into how that compression test is done, why it's done, and what tools you need to do it. So let's have a look. So the tools you're going to need to do the compression check is I would say a compression tester. So we've got uh, a standard compression tester gauge here and you're going to hook up your air to this side. That's your air source from your air compressor. And then this end is going to go on to the cylinder itself. And uh, to do that you're going to need this tool which is a compression tester, just a special adapter fitting. This will screw into where the spark plug is. You'll pull that spark plug out, put this in and then these hook together there, just like that. And of course, to get the spark plugs in and out, you'll need a spark plug wrench uh, socket, sorry, spark plug socket, and uh, pop out the plugs, hook this up, apply your air, and you're good. Okay, so as you can see here, Brent and Megan are getting the aircraft set up for the compression test, and Brent is gonna be showing Megan how to do this here. Oh, got off. The and the got off. off. Brent will handle the propeller and ensure that that doesn't get away while Megan right. runs the compression gauge and, and, and hooks up the air. Pressure on. And that looks to be 76 or 77 again. Okay. Pressure off. Pressure off. And disconnecting. And we're okay. clear. Now we'll just move it to the next cylinder down the line. Now, uh, just to recap, uh, Brent is uh, working that propeller to get the cylinder that they're working on up on top dead center, meaning the piston's at the top of the, the sh of its stroke in the cylinder. And uh, he's also made sure that the magnetos are disconnected uh, by removing the P lead so the mags uh, cannot fire. So there's no chance of the engine uh, firing while they're moving the propeller. So always be safe and make sure that those are disconnected. It's almost like 80. 79. Okay. Oh yeah, cut it off. Pressure off. And up there. So there was the first three cylinders, and uh, now we'll switch to the other side, and we'll get the other three on the uh, left side of the engine. Pressure off. You got it? Yes, I'll have it in a moment. Okay, can I have the pull up? Feel free to pressurize you guys at any time. Pressure on. What's it looking like? 77. Okay. Pressure off. I'm disconnecting it. Okay. Now that clicking sound that you hear, that is the actual impulse of the engine as the uh, propeller is being turned. So that's actually sending the spark from the magnetos back through the spark plugs. But again, uh, the magnetos have been disconnected so the uh, spark plugs cannot fire. Okay, so we're now going to demonstrate what happens if you are not doing a proper job during the compression check and if you were to not be holding on to the propeller appropriately. Um, this can be a very dangerous thing and we want to demonstrate what can happen just so you're aware of what can go wrong um, when you don't do it correctly. So we've got uh, air pressure coming to our cylinder uh, number one up top here and so Megan's going to apply some pressure and we've got the thing on top of the center right now and we're going to let the uh, um, propeller, we're just going to turn it here by hand, well not by hand, with the broom, 
and uh, let the propeller go through just so you can see how much energy is behind that, uh, that propeller with the air pressure. So let's go ahead and put the uh, air on, okay. the base clear. Okay. All right, and we'll bring the propeller around now and you'll see what happens if we go over center. There we go. So you see it comes around pretty quick and it's enough to hurt somebody pretty good if you weren't holding on very well. So always make sure you've got either two people doing it, one person to hold the propeller, the other person to run the air. Um, or if you're a big guy in the shop, uh, make sure you got a good hold on that prop. So the other thing I wanted to discuss was the differential pressure themselves and what that can mean for you as the uh, pilot or the owner of the aircraft because understanding what these mean uh, can help you to determine the, the health of your engine and uh, understand the potential longevity of that engine. So if you've got a low compression, if it's uh, you know, 60 out of 80, 50 out of 80, something um, abnormally low depending on, again, continental or light combing, depending on what's acceptable for that air engine, um, the main thing to look for is where your where the leak is coming from you know why is it not holding that 80 so the mechanic is going to check for a number of uh, indicators to, to determine where that leak is coming from and what might be the issue the first thing is that there if they notice that the air is blowing by um, the rings the indicator there is you're going to hear the air you can actually feel it sometimes coming out of the breather tube of the engine and when like I said when that happens that's an indication that the rings might be an issue um, possibly didn't they're not broken in properly they're not or they're not seated um, possibly the, the gaps are lined up either there's a number of things but it's an it's a ring issue if the exhaust or if the air is blowing by the exhaust if you listen to the tailpipe through the tailpipe you can hear the air brushing through you can sometimes feel it and that would be an indication of an exhaust valve issue and the same thing goes for if you hear it coming through the intake, uh, the carburetor, the air box, the intake area, that would be an intake valve issue. And that just gives the mechanic uh, an indicator of where to start looking to kind of troubleshoot and, and determine where the uh, issue is coming from that's causing that leak and why the compression isn't up where it should be. So those are just some helpful tips. Hopefully you guys can uh, apply that at your next annual and pay attention when your mechanic is performing this test so that you can understand what he's doing, why he's doing it, and uh, hopefully help you educate yourself on your aircraft and be a better pilot and aircraft owner. Well hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and learned a little bit about your aircraft from a uh, pilot's perspective or owner's perspective and maybe demystifying a little bit about that to annual inspection. If you want more information there's a lot of great resources online definitely check out the engine manufacturers websites uh, for more information there. If you like what you're seeing check us out more on Facebook our website is WalterAviation.com we're also on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So stay tuned for more information, and we'll see you soon.